Hey everybody, Jabman025 here. Today I'm taking a look at my 98th Master Grade, the Tall Geese EW from the series Mobile Suit Gundam Wing. The EW is just a redesign, slight redesign of the original Tall Geese, but I decided to do a custom version of this kit, so this is a repaint of a repaint. Now what I did is I went took the sky gray they use here. You see, this is the standard white, and this is the sky gray they use for the darker color parts. I didn't like that sky gray in the least, so I decided I'm going to repaint all that into a dark gray so it's a little closer to a TV version. In fact, my original intention was to do a straight TV version of the Tall Geese, but I changed a couple things. Next thing I did on the wings, on the thrusters on the back, they gave you stickers for these parts here. I decided to go ahead and paint them in a flat yellow. I, th I thought it looked better and the stickers didn't, weren't that nice anyway. The downside being is the yellow I use doesn't 100% match to the yellow they give you for the parts. So I decided to repaint all that too. This is a little bit more orange tinge to this yellow and I really didn't like it anyway so I went ahead and repainted it. And here you go. Like I said the sky gray becomes a dark gray more in line with the TV version. And the yellow parts get repainted to a flat yellow. You can see I didn't paint every single inch of the part because quite frankly you don't have to. A lot of these parts are going to be covered up. The shield here, I repaint the inner section, which you will see part of later, to another color. But, you see this part here, if I was doing straight TV version, this would be a gray or a steel or something. I kind of like the yellow look to it, so I decided to keep it. That's why this isn't a 100% TV version, because I changed a little. Here's what I was talking about with the painting everything. You're not going to see all those inner parts, so why bother painting them? Just paint those vents. That's the only part anyone's ever going to see in the first place. And you can see how the dark gray reaches in the torso, those two sections on the back. Faceplate. you got some painting to do here. They give you a plain clear piece for the eyes. And they give you a silver sticker for the back here. Kind of looks like a Leo, doesn't it? And they give you a clear, another clear piece you can put over top of that. I decided not to use it. I use some sky, I mean some clear blue to get that kind of sky blue look. And with that silver behind it, I think I hit the eyes dead on perfect. A little more painting to do. You see those vents on the side of the face? That's got to be repainted. The one red part, the red horn or hood or whatever you want to call it. This had one hideously bad nub on it, so I just decided to repaint it in a flat red. Just because I didn't like that bad nub. <laughs> kind of some interesting elbows on this kit. You still get a nice bend out of it, but you see it will not go 100% straight. And it didn't really make sense to me at first until I put on the elbow armor. This big old giant chunk of elbow armor pretty much prevents it from going 100% straight. It does have a neat separation mechanic when you move it. Three parts separate when the elbow bends, and you still get lots of pose uh, movement out of it, so that's not a huge problem. See, the ball joint on the shoulder looks like a ball joint. It's just a sliding joint, but it still works very well. Interchangeable fingers on the hands. A little more yellow around the wrist. And like I said, you can't get it 100% straight, but you still get lots of movement out. So that's no real problem. Feet are a little odd. They are one big block, and they barely move at all. You see, you're getting a little bit of toe movement out of it, but that's pretty much it. And the whole thing is just a big block. Not a whole lot of movement out of the feet. The ankles, however, are excellent. Lots of movement, uh, movement out of the ankles, pardon me. Side to side, back and forward, j just about anywhere you want. And you add the legs on there. You have this link here, which we're going to use for the side skirt armor later. And you get the little bit of lining in here. Tiny bit of painting I did. You could just easily do that with a gun marker. And a big bend out of the knee with a neat, again, neat separation mechanic. And like I said, the feet don't really do a whole lot, but the ankles are superb. You can do just about anything you want with the ankles. So you can't quite do the splits, but it does come pretty darn close. So, excellent ankles on this kit if to compensate for the pretty lousy feet. Skirt armor, you get a little painting to do on that front uh, thruster. You got these two back thrusters back here. Little piece opens up. 
I repainted the thrusters in there silver because I thought it would look neat. They come in a dark gray. And just slide shut. You can have one open, both open, doesn't matter. And the big old side skirt. When I saw this, I was like, man, this is really going to hamper posability. This is going to mess things up, but not really. It is connected to the big old thigh, and it's connected to the other piece of the side skirt, and it you know has lots of movement of it, so it doesn't hamper as bad as I thought it would. And again, a little more lining here. You do have a decent amount of lining on this kit, not a ton. And you can see the main body all put together. So outside that yellow I kept on the shoulders and the wrists, it's pretty much TV version, but it's not 100%, so I'm just calling it a custom job. Now, the big old thrusters on the back. These are two gigantic thruster engines, and these are really, really neat. If you open up the section, it's on a uh, hinge system, so they both open up. See the thrusters in there? Again, I repainted those. And another neat little effect here. If you move this wing, it also moves that thruster on the inside back and forth. So yeah, that's a pretty cool effect, and you get two of them. And you really get a sense of what the Tall Geese is. Tall Geese is a super-powered Leo. More armor, more weapons, and a heck of a lot more speed. Now, these do make it a little back-heavy. It doesn't take much to knock him over. But it's not terrible. It's not, you know... To the point where you can't have them standing. Again, I talked about I repainted some parts on the shield. It has this inner frame which I repainted silver just because I thought it would look neat. The dauber gun on this thing is a really cool weapon. You see, they have a spring in there. A little different. A little spring action. It acts like it's reloading. Pops the shell out, puts another one in, goes on. Add on all the rest. Again, this is an excellent looking weapon. They really put a lot of detail into this. A little clear piece in the front. Again, you got to do some painting here. Add some clear blue. But you do have a really neat system here where the hinges back, moves the ammo clip, works really well, and it looks really neat. It's a nice little add-on to this weapon. Now, I did do some custom decals for this kit. You see, I have a traditional eagle, which was made for me by a Twitter follower named Juno Uno, which I appreciate. And I've got this double O logo on. Those of you who are fans of Vegeta8259, a.k.a. Henry, may recognize it. There was a really neat decal that he used on his custom tall geeses. I asked to use it, and he was nice enough to let me. Add a couple more, the uh, pilot's name, lightning count, nothing fancy. You can see, I have them on paper here. When you're doing a custom decal, always print them out on paper first cut them out, and make sure they fit. You can see I've got extras. I've got lots of space here. I'm making extras. If I screw one up, guess what? i got another one to use. And I screwed that eagle up a couple of times, so it's a good thing I had three. <laughs> but like I said, cut them out. Make sure you got them sized right. Make sure everything's good to go before you print them on that paper. Here it is. The test door is clear and white. Why am I two using two different kinds? I'll show you in a minute. See, on the front, they look virtually identical, but if you're using something in color, like a color logo or a color shape, you always want to do it on the white paper. If you're just doing something black or some lettering, you want to do it on the clear paper. And what you do is, after you print them out on the paper, let them set for a couple hours, then spray it with these test doors decal bonder. See that skull and crossbones, the flame, the explosion? This is really nasty stuff. It stinks. It's bad for you. So when you spray this, give it a good healthy spray in a very well-ventilated area, preferably outdoors. Again, let it sit for a couple hours, let it dry. Now here you see the eagle on a clear piece of decal paper, and you see the white behind it is bleeding through, making it very faint. This looks even worse on a darker color piece, like a black or a navy. On the white paper, you have to cut out the all the individual pieces, so you got to go in there with a a uh, hobby knife and cut out each individual piece so it'll slide on. Since there's a white background, it goes right on, nothing bleeds through. This is impractical on lettering because you're not going to cut out each individual letter. That's why you do that on clear. And you see I've added them all in there, looking good. I really wanted to add that double O A because I thought it was a neat logo, and B, I kind of wanted a tip of the hat to Henry, the guy who made a Master Grade Tall Geese before there was a Master Grade Tall Geese. 
And like I said, all armored up. That gun actually does help with the balance. It kind of counteracts that those big engines on the back. It looks really good just standing there. The downside is if you want to do any kind of really pose with it, you see the famous Trey's pose for those of you who are going to shell out for the Togi's 2 web shop, uh, the gun's a little too tall, so you're going to have to have Togi standing on something or the gun hanging lower or something. This pose can be pulled off, but it's awkward. Again, getting up on action base. The connection is okay. I kind of remember, uh, compared to the Axia, good enough connection, but could be better. Holding the gun is very awkward. Holding the shield is, guess what, very awkward. It can be done, but it's a major league pain in the butt to get any kind of decent pose with those weapons. Mainly because it has those connections onto the shoulders. I guess technically you don't have to use them, but eh. Beam Saber, at least, is no problem whatsoever. Hooks right in there. Hand slaps on. You get that nice curved blade. And looks real good. And you, it does come with two beam sabers, two blades, and you can put them both in the shield for storage. And looks real good. You can have the thrusters open, which you definitely couldn't do if he was on the ground. Have him flying forward and look good. Final thoughts on this kit. I'm giving this kit a thumbs up. This kit has some issues, but there are no major ones. There's a bunch of little issues. Posability could be a little bit better. The movement on the kit could be a little bit better. The accessories look good, but they could be posed a little bit better. The balance is okay, but it could be organized a little bit better. The action base connection is good, but it could be a little bit better. That's an easy way to describe this kit. Good, but it could be better. Uh, if you want a Tall Geese, this is a good kit. If you want to wait for that Tall Geese 2, which is going to be a web shop only, uh, they're basically going to be the same kits, just with a color swap and a couple of parts changed out. So keep that in mind. This is currently your leader for Master Grade Kit of the Year 2013, by the fact that it is the only kit so far in 2013. So, there you go. I think it'll be beat, but we'll see. Well, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review. I hope you found it informative. If you have any questions, please ask them, and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Thanks again, guys, for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Please leave a comment. You guys know I uh, love reading them, and I'll see you next time. Oh, and uh, one more thing. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner for Best Mullet in a Mobile Suit goes to... Zex Marquis and the Tall Geese! Yeah! Oh, bull.